بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ویٹ وی بین ڈسکسنگ دا تھرمل پاور اسٹیشن سو دس از بیسیکلی دا اسکیمیٹک ارینجمنٹ آف دا تھرمل پاور اسٹیشن وچ ویو سین ان دا پریویس ویڈیو ان کوائٹ اے ڈیٹیل دا اسٹیپ وائز ٹو ڈے وی سی دی آرٹیکل آف دا آرٹیکل نمبر 2.6 آف دا بک دیٹ از دی اکوپمنٹ آف اسٹیم پاور اسٹیشن سو آئی ول گیو دی ہیڈنگ از اکوپمنٹ آف steam power station now what do i mean by this so in this we will study you could say the construction i will just go through the construction of the equipment that is being used we basically know the working of each and every one of them uh, what are we doing in the steam power station is that we are converting thermal energy into electrical energy and that is by means of coal combustion we are utilizing the heat energy of coal combustion to convert water into steam and that steam is then rotating the turbine blades and the turbine is mechanically coupled to an alternator which is converting it into electrical energy finally so this alternator from here you have transformers isolators bus but to the bus bar over here the electricity has finally been produced so this was the whole setup coal storage coal handling plant you store coal you 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 buy coal and you store it then you give it to coal handling plant where you crush it into small pieces in the boil you have furnace in the furnace it is combusted with the help of oxygen oxygen is also provided from outside over there have a look through the air preheater is what it heats the the air by extracting the heat from the flue gases flue gases are formed from the combustion over here the boiler has water which is converted into steam in the superheater it further elevates the temperature of the steam uh, and extracts heat from the flue gases similarly again the flue gases are part through any economizer economizer further extracts them right then the valve is for the regulating of the flow of heat to the turbine right then the exhausted steam comes to the condenser where it is condensed back the river provides uh, the 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 short water or the water that is lost then the feed water pump this is called the feed water then that is fed back through the economizer right the condensed water when fed back is called the feed water feed water pump would extract it we have a feed water heater on the way similarly the water treatment chamber is to remove the pure impurities there gases are present marine life is present stones etc etc forced out fan is there to to put in the air required for the combustion process right yes so that was the schematic arrangement that we've seen in the previous video so the first that we have is the steam generating equipment in which the first thing is the boiler in the steam generating equipment number one i would give the heading over here is steam generating equipment so in the steam generating equipment i have number one is boiler so the boiler does what in boiler the water is converted water is heated to be converted into steam fine yes so i'll be reading out from the book okay Uh, uh, is heated by utilizing the heat of coal combustion then they are classified into two types water tube boilers and fire tube boilers okay let me take this call please so the boiler is mainly classified into what uh, into water tube boiler and fire tube boiler so i would write over here is water tube boiler now these are uh, these differ on their construction the other is what uh, the other is the fire tube boiler okay so what do you have is in a water tube boiler water flows through the tube so this is basically a construction of tubes as in your air conditioners so in the water tube boiler what happens is the water flows through the tubes and it is surrounded by the heat right yes whereas in the fire tube boilers the heat is passed through the tubes and it is in the surrounding in the chamber it is surrounded by water so water is heated in that way right yes water tube boilers have a number of advantages over there water tube boilers have a number of advantages so i will just give it a start uh, uh, that is what they require less space smaller size of tubes and drum high working pressure due to small drum less uh, what is this less liable to explosion etc etc boiler furnace you have a boiler furnace i would give it over here boiler furnace so furnace is what furnace is that area where the coal combustion takes place 
the coal combustion takes place you provide the fuel inside it fuel and you have oxygen and this uh, this process is basically the process of combustion and this gives you what this gives you some heat and the next is the flue gases flue gases are maybe oxides of sulfur hydrogen nitrogen etc which i have mentioned over here these are the waste basically flue gases is your waste and this is a 50 50 percent conversion which means 50 percent heat 50 percent flue gases it goes to waste where fuel is burned to liberate the heat energy it is made of refractive materials such as fire clay silicon etc read it out for yourself in the next next we have number three is your what i will write over here is the superheater number three is your superheater so the superheater you know what does it do but i will just is a device that superheats the steam that is it further raises the temperature increases the overall efficiency alloy steel it is made of alloy steels the name is given whatever it is very difficult to pronounce heated by the these tubes are heated by the heat of the flue gases right so the flue gases uh, have the heat which is utilized over here they are again mainly classified into two types radiant superheater and convection superheater so i will write over here the first one is a radiant superheater and the second one is the convection superheater fine okay the radiant superheater is placed in the furnace between the water walls and receives heat from the burning fuel through radiation process. So this is placed between the furnace walls and this receives the heat through radiation process. Now you know better than me what a radiation process is. It has two disadvantages. Due to high furnace temperature, it may get overheated and therefore require a careful design. The second is superheater is not finding favor. These where is it? The temperature of the superheater falls with the increase in steam output. Whatever, just let it go. On the other hand, the convection superheater is placed in the boiler tube bank and receives heat from the flue gases through convection process. So this is done through the convection process. I will write over here where are these placed. So the convection superheater is placed where? In the boiler tube bank. This is placed in the boiler tube bank and the radiant superheater is placed where so i will write over here uh, where is it where is it this is in directly in between the furnace walls this is placed between the furnace walls so this has the convection has advantage over the other one the next is the economizer you know again the number four economizer you know how, why it is used we'll see what the book has written over this it is a device which heats the feed water on its way to the boiler by deriving heat from the flue gases so i will look the blue i have mentioned for the flue gases over here over there for the exhaust steam so this is basically done uh, this is basically heating the feed water all right all right the, uh, where is it? Okay. This increases the boiler efficiency. The feed water flows through these tubes and the f and the flue gases flow outside. So there is a tube, there is a, again a tubular construction and what do you have? The feed water flows inside the, inside the tubes. Okay. Flows inside the tubes and the flue gases flow over them. The heat is extracted. Next is what? Air preheater. Number five. So I may be writing it a little rough but this is you know just i am reading it out from the book anyways air preheater so super heaters and economizer generally do are not able to extract the heat fully from the flue gases and therefore the air preheater is also employed to recover so they recover the the, the, the heat that is left in the escaping uh, gases right and therefore and also what do you have is uh, they also if, uh, uh, heat the air that is required over here for the combustion process the oxygen that is for, uh, uh, you know from the from by means of the fan that is brought in so they also heat that right yes so they are increasing the thermal efficiency of course so the they have again again got two types reciprocative and regenerative so the first one is reciprocative 
and the second one is regenerative. So these are the two types of air brew heaters. The reciprocative type air heater consists of a group of steel tubes. The, the flue gases are passed through the tubes while the air flows externally to the tubes, right? In the reciprocative type, the flue gases are passed through the tubes while the air flows externally to the tubes. So over here you have what? The flue gases are passed inside the tubes whereas the air flows over the tubes right yes whereas the regenerative type consists of slowly moving drum made of metal plates the flow gases flow continuously on one side of the drum and air on the other side so they have a moving drum over here where the flue gases flow on one side of the drum and the, the, the gases flow on the other and this heat exchange takes place right yes so this was number one that was what the steam generating equipment the second is what the second is your condenser the second is condenser this was the first the condenser does what so a condenser is a device which condenses the steam at the exhaust of the turbine it serves two important functions firstly it creates low pressure at the exhaust of the turbine and by and secondly the condensed steam can be used as feed water right so you know this so they have again got, again got two types number first is a jet condenser and the next is the surface condenser jet condenser and the second one is the surface condenser now let's see what the book has about it in a jet condenser cooling water and and exhausted steam are mixed together we have exhausted steam from here the cooling water is taken from the river right we to, i told you that then the cooling water takes the heat and is discharged to the river and the, the steam is fed back through the feed water pump right so over here in the jet condenser what do you say is the cooling water is mixed with what with the uh, with the exhausted steam with the exhausted steam right yes therefore the temperature of the cooling water and condensate is the same when leaving the condenser so when they are leaving the condenser so the cooling water and the condensate that is the exhausted steam will have the same temperature so i will write over here in a bracket is that they will have the same temperature next what do you have advantages of this type of condenser are low initial cost less floor area required less cooling water required and low maintenance charges however a disadvantages are that condensate is wasted and high power is required for pumping water in a surface conductor there in a surface condenser there is no direct contact between cooling water and exhausted steam so no contact between what between the cooling water and the exhausted steam it consists of bank of horizontal tubes enclosed enclosed in a cast iron shell the cooling water flows through these tubes and exhausted steam so the cooling water flows through the tubes and the exhausted steam flows through what over the surface of these tubes so they flow over the surface of these tubes right yes the steam gives up the heat to the water and itself is condensed right yes over there they were mixed over here they have tubular structure the cooling water is flowing through the tubes the exhaust steam is flowing over them the heat is extracted the, the, so the cooling water becomes hot and the steam is condensed advantages of this type of condenser are condensate can be used as a feed water less pumping power required and creation of a better vacuum at the turbine exhaust however disadvantages are high initial cost large flow area and high maintenance charges okay okay next number three is the prime mover number three is what it is the prime mover which is basically the turbine so number three is the prime mover what do we have the prime mover converts steam energy to mechanical energy so I will write steam energy is converted to mechanical energy with the help of the prime mover by rotation of the turbine blades. 
there are two types of prime movers steam engines and steam turbines so you have steam engines number one and the second one is a steam turbines fine okay where were we okay here a steam turbine has several advantages over steam engine that is uh, as a prime move that is high efficiency simple construction high speed less floor area and requirement low maintenance cost therefore all modern steam power stations simply employ steam turbines as prime movers so steam turbines are used as prime movers steam turbines are classified into two types the first is impulse and the next is reaction impulse turbines and reaction turbines let's see what the book writes about it in an impulse turbine the steam expands completely in the stationary nozzles in an impulse turbine steam expands completely where in the stationary nozzles right yes or fixed blades the pressure over the moving blades remaining constant pressure is constant over here pressure is constant in doing so the steam attains a high velocity and impinges against the moving blades this results in the impulsive force on the moving blades which sets the rotor rotating the velocity is high over here i will read it out again in doing so the steam turbines the the uh, the steam expands completely in the stationary nozzles the pressure over the moving blades remain constant in doing so the steam attains a high velocity and impinges against the moving blades this results in the impulsive force on the moving blades which sets the rotor rotating in the reaction turbine the steam is partially expanded in the stationary nozzles partially expanded in the stationary nozzles the remaining expansion takes place during its flow over the moving blades this results the result is that the momentum of the steam causes a reaction force on the moving blades which sets the rotor in motion right so in one the steam is expanding completely in the reaction it is expanding uh, what it is expanding partially right yes the next is what the next after the prime mover is number four which is the water treatment plant so uh, if i could write over here yes i can write over here no problem number four is your water treatment plant so what do we have about this boilers require clean and soft water for longer life and better efficiency so you require clean and soft water for higher life and better efficiency however the source of the boiler feed water however the source of the boiler feed water is what it is a river or a lake where is it which may contain suspended and dissolved impurities dissolved gases therefore it is very important that the water is first purified and softened by chemical treatment and then delivered to the boiler the water from the source of the supply is stored in stored storage tanks and this and that so the water treatment plant is for what i have mentioned it over here it is for the purification for the softness and cleanliness of of the river water that is used as a feed water right yes and finally the fifth is that you have your electrical equipment so the fifth is you have your electrical equipment in the electrical equipment what do i have so have a look a modern power station contains numerous electrical equipment however the most important ones are what the alternator number one is your alternator so alternator does what uh, alternator is coupled to a steam turbine and converts mechanical energy of the turbine to electrical energy so the alternator converts the mechanical energy to electrical energy the alternator may be hydrogen or air cooled 
write this down this this may be a, a, a an mcq question that this may be hydrogen or air cooled fine yes the necessary excitation is provided by means of main and pilot exciters directly coupled to the alternator shaft the details are in the electrical machines this is uh, not to be uh, covered in a greater detail over here the next are transformers of course you will have transformers number two is transformers what do we have about this so a generating station has different types of transformers do i need to write them okay let's say number a is the main step up transformer which would step up your generation voltage to the to the transmission voltage level for instance you are, gener you are generating at an 11 kilo volt but then for the transmission purpose 11 kilo volt is not uh, uh, you know good i don't know the proper word it's not feasible you could say so you have to uh, uh, you know step it up to 500 kilo volts so 11 kilo volts to 500 kilo volts so this is the main step up transformer right yes number b is the station transformers Number B are the station transformer which does what which are used for general service over there in the generation plant in the power plant for example lightning etc in the power station or the, the domestic use of the power station so that is the station transformer and the next is the auxiliary transformer number C number C is the auxiliary transformer and that are which supply to individual unit auxiliaries which supply to individual unit auxiliaries right yes sir so this was for the electrical equipment for the transformers and finally the electrical equipment includes number three is your switch gear switch gear is what is the protection purpose it houses such equipment which locates the fault on the system and isolate the faulty plot for the healthy part switch gear includes devices that locates the fault and then does what isolates the faulty part from healthy part so this is what the switch gear includes and the devices in this are what circuit breakers relays switches and other control devices circuit breakers relays switches and other control devices etc is that fine it should be so i believe that i should finish it over here what do you say what do you say a question may arise that the boiler we have a very high uh, uh, temperature so uh, 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 what about it how much temperature can it sustain the steam the pressure high pressure so it can sustain up, up, up to pressure of 300 degree centigrade is present over there in the boiler 300 degree celsius and it can sustain up to a 1000 psi of pressure as well right yes now i need to talk about anything else over here do i need to talk about the turbine works on the carnot engine okay the turbine works on the carnot engine where is the turbine over here that i have mentioned uh where is the turbine where is the turbine uh, over here we had the turbine impulse turbine yes prime mover this so this works on what this works on the carnot engine this works on the Carnot engine where you have a source temperature, you have a sink temperature. So you know this basically, but you have a source temperature, you have a sink temperature. The greater the difference between them, the greater is the efficiency of it, right? Yes. Okay. So why do we compound the pressure and at the same time doing velocity compounding? Because if you have only one turbine, the steam has sufficient energy to produce the RPMs of 1000. You require RPMs for 50 cycles is, uh, for, for 50 cycles are what the RPMs required for 50 cycles is what is 3000 and this can produce up to 10,000 so that is why the compounding is done right yes so i don't think i have any other point if i had i will just talk about it in the next video in this video what did we saw we saw just a general uh, you know a general construction you could say or a general working of of each and every uh, thing that is being used over here 
right yes over here the finally electricity has been produced you have the transformer isolated circuit breakers and finally it is connected to the bus bar i finished this video over here i will see you in the next video very soon till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye